Hello YouTube, my name is Nero, today we have some more Call of Duty World War 2, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Today I want to talk about balance and changes here in Call of Duty World War 2. For as much as we love to criticize Sledgehammer Games for all of their decisions they've made, and let's be honest, they've made a bunch of bad ones, they really do have a tough task in front of them, right? Because Call of Duty World War 2 is selling ridiculously well so far. For those that don't know, it's selling twice as well as the past couple of Call of Duty games did at this point in the year, and you may think, well who cares about those games, right? Those were Jet pack games they didn't sell very well. That's true compared to older CODs, but they were still the best selling games of like any given year. So Infinite Warfare, for example, outsold Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 combined. It was only outsold, I think, by Overwatch last year. And of course, Black Ops 3 was the best selling game of that year. COD is ridiculously popular regardless of what game is released. And so far, Call of Duty World War 2 is doing twice as well as those games, right? And Christmas is right around the corner, so it's only going to be selling even more. So they have so many people buying this game. And the downside to that is each and every one of those players has an opinion on what Sledgehammer games could do better to improve the game itself. When you have that many people shouting opinions at you, both constructive and mostly vulgar, let's be honest, have you read Twitter, people are just vulgar most of the time, it can be tough to make important balancing changes. Well, yesterday I was actually linked to a massive thread on Reddit where user BlazeRyan11 clearly and concisely listed a bunch of constructive feedback and suggestions from the community. These were, of course, designed to help improve the multiplayer experience. Sledgehammer games saw this and they responded. They thanked Ryan and everyone else who contributed for all the feedback and assured us that they will be checking back to this post often to check out feedback from the community. Now, of course, I don't want to read off the entire post here in this video. It's massive and that would take all day, but I would like to link you guys to it so you guys go ahead and check it out and make your own suggestions. But at the same time, I would like to bring a lot of attention to one point in this post right here. The polling room. I think this is a fantastic idea. So the post suggests that we revamp the headquarters to remove the theater and add a polling room. And I can see why they decide to remove the theater. Let's be honest, right now the theater serves really no purpose. Nobody goes in there for any reason whatsoever. I have a feeling later on down the line it may actually be used once tournaments and events start taking place. But right now anyway, it's pretty much a ghost town and nobody uses it. But I don't think we should actually have to replace the theater. They could simply add a polling booth or a ballot box or something like that to the headquarters. What's really cool about the HQ is it's so big and there are so many unused NPCs and areas that they could really add a ton of content to the headquarters itself and I think a feature like this would actually be right up their alley. So when it comes to the polls themselves, Sledgehammer could use this new tool to accurately gauge community feedback and opinion. Do you guys remember when they said that based on their internal data, more fans prefer Domination 50 and they find it to be more fun? Well, I don't know how they came to that that conclusion. They say it's due to their internal data, but the internal data, I mean, what is it? Your kill death ratio, your win loss ratio, and your score per minute. And then, of course, those polls that pop up occasionally after matches to ask you whether or not you actually had fun. Other game companies have found that polls like that are actually useless. They've gotten rid of them because most of the time, people will say, yes, they had fun if they went positive and they won. They will say, no, they did not have fun if they went negative or if their team lost. Like, that's basically what you can actually get from that. Those polls don't actually tell you anything. It would be much better if there was a poll in the game where it said, what do you think of Domination? Should we keep the score per kill as is right now? Should it be increased up to 75 or should it be increased up to 100? If their internal data is correct, then more people are going to vote for 50. But if their internal data is wrong, more people are going to vote for other things and that could actually give them some more information to consider when making changes to the Domination game mode. I'm not saying they have to make changes based off of these polls or anything like that. And in fact, I would say keep the polls private. Don't even tell us the results of them because if you do then people are going to there's gonna be like this mob mentality right you're gonna have a bunch of youtubers and live streamers trying to influence people to vote one way or the other and then of course if they don't make those changes that these certain people want there's gonna be a big uproar so don't even tell us the results or anything like that just have the polls in game gauge feedback and use that information to make informed decisions about the game going forward. That would actually be an incredible addition to this. And I'm not even talking only about domination. There's been a lot of people actually talking about increasing the score limit in Team Deathmatch from 75 up to 100. Now, if I'm being honest, I've seen a lot of people suggesting that because there's a contract where you have to get X amount of kills in Team Deathmatch and it's hard to do that with the current score limit. But maybe instead of changing up the entire game mode, we should consider changing up the contract. But regardless, that's something that people are actually talking about. There are actually a lot of people that do prefer TDM 100, so put that to a vote and see what people actually think about that. I really do think a polling booth would be the best thing for Call of Duty World War 2 going forward to make it a game
game that is really about community feedback. So far, Sledgehammer has been great. They really have been listening to us. They have been making tons of changes. Let's be honest, there are lots of issues still. You know, they have a long road ahead of them, but so far, they're definitely listening, and if they implement a system like this, I think it would actually benefit the multiplayer greatly going forward, especially with so many people always throwing opinions left, right, and center. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I really have here in this video. I wanted to bring attention to that, so if you guys could tweet this video to Sledgehammer Games, make sure they are aware of it, because a feature like this would be fantastic, and they could very easily implement it. They already have a polling system in the game. All they would really have to do is update the headquarters slightly by adding in a polling room, a polling booth, a polling NPC, or even just a ballot box, or go ahead and update the mailbox. I mean, we check it every day anyway, multiple times a day. Why not mail us a poll now and again to see what we think about various aspects of the multiplayer experience itself? Well, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that's all I have for you guys here in this video. Thank you all so much for listening. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section below. And if you could, let me know what major change would you make right now. If you had the ability to make a huge change here in Call of Duty World War II, what would that actually be? I would love to hear about that down there in the comment section below. Once again, thank you all so much for listening, and I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.